Hello everyone, this is a sneak peek of our new Plasma screen for Mach 4. I wanted to share with you an exciting new feature that will work with all kinds of machines, not just Plasma. This is the Teach function, and it allows you to create custom G-code by jogging your machine and mapping points as you go. You might be thinking, why would I need that? Now, if you've ever wanted to make a quick cut without fiddling around in your CAM program, now you can. Show Mach 4 what you want to do, save the G-code, and you can recreate your project as many times as you'd like. If you're not on board yet, stick with me and I'll show you what Teach Function lets you do and how to start tracing and creating your own patterns. First things first, the software and your machine need to be enabled. Once they're enabled, you can start using the Teach Function in all its glory. So click Start Teach whenever you're ready. And the first thing you're gonna be prompted to do is go to your start point. You can do that ahead of time, jog your machine wherever you wanna go, might save you a little bit of time, but it will ask you before you go any further if that's the position that you're in. Next, you're going to enter in your feed rate. It sets it to 50 automatically. You want to adjust that to be accurate to what you're actually going to use because that's going to be put into the G-code. Then you're going to be asked if you want to set your current point to X0, Y0. You can set it to your current point. If you hit no, it's just going to choose whatever your current work coordinates are as your start point. Now there's a couple different buttons here that you're gonna see. First, you have the line and point. That allows you to draw just a straight line from that starting point you just created to wherever you map your end point. Next, you're gonna see you have arc midpoint as a button. We're gonna talk more about that later, but that's gonna allow you to draw an arc using a start, middle, and end point. You also have the rapid end point, which allows you to move from one profile to another using a rapid move. You have two different kinds of circles. You have a two-point circle, which uses two points. Shocker, right? Uses the outs an outside point and a center point to create a circle. And you have the three-point circle button. That three-point circle button allows you to choose three points along the outside of the circle without needing to find the center, and it'll create a circle for you. You're also going to see on the screen the new jog buttons. I'm a big fan of these new jog buttons. You have your normal up and down, positive and negative jog functions, but you also have some diagonal options that make getting to those different points while you're creating your teach file a lot more easy. Now, end teach. What it's going to ask you, would you like to close the profile with a line? If you click yes, it's going to finish your drawing with a line back to the start point. If you click no, it's going to finish your drawing as is. The next option it's going to give you is to save your G-code. This allows you to save that G-code that's being generated so you can pull it up later. If you're creating the same part over and over and over and over again, saving your G-code is probably a good option. That way you don't have to draw it out every single time. Now that the G-code is generated, you should see your drawing in the toolpath. These are the basics of the teach function, but I'm going to give you, show you some practical applications on how you can actually use these and put them to the test. Okay, so I'm down in the lab and I'm ready to show you how the teach function works. We're going to start teach. I'm going to show you how to map and cut a line. So if you mess up and you're not at your start point, don't be afraid to hit cancel and just start over again. So we've canceled out. We're going to move to our start point and then we're going to click start teach. Now we're at our start location. We can go ahead and hit start enter in our feed rate. We're going to set the current point to 0, 0 this time, and then we're going to jog to a second point on the line. Now we're using a pendant to jog, but you can also use those nice new jog buttons on screen that I mentioned to get to where you need to be. Once we're there, we're going to hit line end point, and you'll see that line has been displayed in the tool path. Next, would you like to close the profile with line? Well, we just created a line, so we don't have a profile to close, but we are going to save the G-code file just in case we want to use this again. Now we're using a line to cut off our material and cut it down to the size that we need to be. This is a good practical application, something you might find yourself doing, um, but you can get much more complicated. You can use your lines to make any kind of geometric structure that you want, but we wanted to start off pretty basic. So when we're ready, hit cycle start, and you'll see the machine move through the G-code that we created. You can also see that the G-code did auto-populate in the window, which is good. So the next thing that we're going to do is head back on over to the Teach tab, and we're going to make a circle. We're going to start with a two-point circle. So first, we're going to jog over to our start point and hit Start Teach. 
Now it's going to ask move to a start location. We are already there, so we're going to hit start, enter in our feed rate, set our current point to 0, 0, and we're going to click two point circle. Use the previous point on the circle. The previous point is the start point, which is what we're going to use, and then we're going to find our center point. You can measure it with ruler, calipers, we're just going to eyeball it and then choose the direction that the circle is going to be cut. We're not going to close the profile with a line because the circle is a closed line already, but we are going to save the G-code file. Now we're going to get our guide out of the way, head back to the Program Run tab, and start our cut. Now we're going to make it a bit more complicated. We're going to take a part that's already been made and try to replicate it. We're going to use a spacer, which is made up of a circle and a square. We're going to start with the inner profile, which is the circle, and you, we're going to do a three-point circle this time. The three-point circle is great because you don't have to find a center. Mach 4 does it for you. You just jog and map your three points along the circle, and you're good to go. So we're going to start here. We're at our start point. Go back to teach, start teach. Select our start location. We're going to set it to zero, zero, but you don't have to. And then we're going to click three point circle, use the starting point as our first point, and then we're going to move to the second point on the circle. It doesn't have to be any specific three points on the circle. Um, you just have to pick three points and Mach 3 will do the math for you. Now we're going to jog to our third point. And once we're sure we're in the right spot on the circle, we're going to hit select. Perfect. So you can see our circle shows up in our toolpath. And we're going to move on to the outer square. Now we're going to use that rapid endpoint button. So what's going to happen when this actually cuts is we're going to cut the circle, lift, rapid move to this corner point that we just designated, and then begin to cut the square. So now we're going to move to the end point of our first line and use the line endpoint button. Then we're going to jog along to the next corner and align endpoint again. And again, we're going to be jogging along and line endpoint. So hopefully you're starting to see that you can kind of create a world of different shapes using these simple functions. You just have to know what you're doing. Um, now this is a good example of not knowing what you're doing. So during this process we messed up. We said yes we want to close the profile with a line. What we thought was going to happen is that our square would be finished for us, but what really happened is our most recent endpoint just gets mapped straight to our starting point with a line. Now if we had cut this it would have cut our part right in half. It would have been a mess, uh, but instead we caught the mistake by looking at our toolpath and we were able to start over and remap our part. So I sped through it real quick. I didn't want to walk you through all the steps, but we did start over and try it again. I wanted to leave this mistake in there so that you can learn from it. Um, the teach function is only as good as you are. It's only going to be as accurate as you are. It's only going to understand the commands that you give it. So you want to be sure to double check your work, check that tool path. And if you follow those simple steps, your parts are going to come out fantastic and you can be as creative as you want to be. These parts aren't all that creative. Um, we wanted to do some basic functions for you to show you lines and circles. Once our file is cut here, I'm going to move on and show you how the arcs work because I think it's pretty cool. So we did save our G code once we fixed it. We replaced the, uh, the erroneous file with this one. And our new G code was created so we can get our guide out of the way, head over to Program Run, and start our cut. See how quick that was to just go from drawing it out to, to simply cutting it? We didn't have to switch programs. We did it all in one screen. Well, two screens, the teach screen and the program run screen if you want to be technical. But just a few clicks and a few minutes of time, and we were able to replicate that part that we already had on hand. I think that's really useful, and I'm hoping that you do too. So to create some arcs, we're going to use our original spacer as a guide. You don't necessarily need a guide. It was just easier for us to do it this way. Um, so we're going to go back to the teach screen. Hit Start Teach. We're going to head our start location, enter our feed rate, and pick 0, 0, as you've seen me do a couple times now. And then we're going to go find the arc midpoint. This is like the height of the arc. So you can make your arc deep, you can make it shallow, but you want to map the uh, midpoint, and then you'll see the button changed to tell you to find the end point. The end point for us is going to be the other corner of our square. 
and then it changes back to mid so we can keep on making arcs. If we wanted to, we could switch to a line, which is actually what we're going to do. We're going to switch to a line. So now we've done an arc, we've done a line. Let's throw in another arc there. So we're going to find the arc midpoint, and then we're going to map the end point. This is just a, a much smaller arc than the last one we did, but that's fine. And then uh, let's see. Let's do one last arc to finish things off. So we're going to map the midpoint and the end point. So you see there's just a couple buttons. There's only a couple options, but you have a lot of flexibility here. Now this part that we're making here is not necessarily a practical part. It kind of looks neat, but I figured it would show off the arcs pretty well. We're not going to close it with a line because it's already a closed profile. We do want to save our G-code. You don't have to save your G-code every single time. Um, if it's a one-off that you're not going to make more than one of and you don't think you're going to need it again, you don't have to save it. But we've been saving it just in case. So now we'll, we can go ahead and cut our arc creation here. There. And this one's a pretty good example because it matches what we drew so well. Um, it's, it's a nonsense shape that we just made up, but it matches exactly. Now that we've covered all the features of the teach function, let's review. The teach function is a new function that allows you to create custom G-code by manually jogging your machine and mapping points along the way. You can use the teach function to create lines, arcs, and two kinds of circles. A line has a start point and an end point. An arc has a start, mid, and end point. The midpoint, by the way, does not have to be in the center of the arc. It can be anywhere along the arc. The two-point circle maps a point on the circle in the center point to create a circle. The three-point circle maps three points on the circle to create the circle. Always double check your work and be precise. Remember, with the teach function, you are in control. I hope you learned a lot and I look forward to seeing what you can do with the teach function.